hello and welcome back to this channel so in today's tutorial we're going to learn how to use the shapes feature in adobe fresco and using that we're going to create some christmas themed wrapping paper or wallpaper or anything that you want to call it in adobe fresco so for this tutorial you would need adobe capture to capture these shapes so make sure you go ahead and download it before you begin this tutorial okay okay so let's go ahead and get started so you can use any artboard size or canvas size, but I'm just going to click on create new and go to digital and click on current screen size. So if you don't see it in landscape format, you can click on this button here and you can switch to landscape. So there are different ways in which you can use Adobe Capture to capture shapes. So first one is obviously creating a shape of your own. So for example, I want some snowflakes in my wallpaper wrapping paper so i'm going to go ahead and create them myself you can actually go ahead and do that using images but for this tutorial let me just go ahead and um, just draw a snowflake so to do that i'm going to go into my vector brushes so you can click on the vector brushes and i'll be using the basic round and there's one setting here which i want you guys to make sure that is you turn off the pressure dynamics so what this means is if you turn it on then it gives thick thin like this depending on how much pressure you put on your pencil if you turn this off it's uniform and we just want that okay you can set the size to any number that you want uh it is set to 28 maybe i'll reduce it to about 10 let me just quickly check it okay that looks a bit thin so make it a little more i guess because this is basically going to be as a pattern on something so maybe around 20s would be good okay and my smoothing is set to about 50s uh, midway that should be a good smoothing level if you keep it too high then there's a lag between your pencil and the line that comes up so you definitely don't want that to happen all right so let's go ahead and draw a snowflake so my snowflake is going to be pretty simple hand-drawn style so i'm just going to go ahead and click and make a line and click and hold so that it becomes a straight line okay and then let's go ahead and do that here as well I'm going to do that here as well but this line is going to be a bit shorter than these two lines here as well so if these lines are not getting snapped to a straight line there's a tiny setting here go to settings app settings and i think it's an input let me just check touch yeah make sure you turn on this snap line over here okay all right so once you have this you can go ahead and make the snowflake like that like i told you it's going to be a very hand-drawn snowflake go ahead and experiment with different styles and once i'm here i'm not going to use the snap line because i want them to be rough like that Okay, so I think my snowflake is ready. I know it's not a perfect snowflake, but it's okay. All right, so now we are gonna go ahead and export it, but one thing you have to make sure is you export a PNG and something which does not have a background. So to remove the background, go back to this layer here and click on this I button to hide the background. Now click on share, publish and export, export as, you can name it if you want to, and let's do it as PNG and export, and let's save the image onto this device, okay? And once you're done click on done now let's go ahead and open capture so if this opens up on your capture screen you can always click on this camera icon to go back over here okay it doesn't matter you can actually go back to the previous screen as well from where you can import the image okay and now click on this image icon here go to your camera roll and bring your image in okay so now you have your image ready and it's in color so it's just picking some colors we don't want that let's click on shapes as soon as you click on shapes you see some different options here first of all the first one right here is this black and white and this is color which does not work <laughs> that's okay we're gonna go ahead and put it on black and white and this here inverts the color you can click on this auto clean so what it does is if you look at these tiny little things 
It removes all those extra beings and it kind of cleans it up. If it's not messing up your artwork, it's always good to do a little bit of auto clean. And then you can click on this colors. And then you have so many different options. This makes it into point, lines. You have different, different options that you can choose to create different, different effects. And that's awesome. So you can always choose these things or you can go back to your original and I'm going to stick to my original. If you want to go ahead and experiment all these settings over here, it's really good to experiment if you sometimes you get really nice things, which for example, this one is like an outline. That's pretty cool, isn't it? Let me just go to original. And once you're done doing everything that you want to do for this, click on the stick here. And now it comes to this screen where you can do more editing. You have a brush where you can actually go ahead and edit things. You can adjust the size however you want and you can undo stuff as well. I'm going to undo that. I don't want this. Okay. Then there's an option of cropping. So if you don't want this to be too huge, you can always go ahead and crop it to match like exactly the size like this. And you always have this button to return back to the original. Okay. Let's go to smooth and in here, this is turned off right now and keep an eye on the snowflake. Now click on on and this usually takes a bit of time depending on your artwork and you see it's smoothened everything, all the lines and things like that and it's created its own version of the snowflake. So now it's your choice to keep it like this or if you want it with off, I'm going to keep it on just because you know, why not? And then click on save. So you can obviously name this however you want. And as soon as you give this, you'll get an option to save it. This is nothing but your creative cloud library where you can save. So for everything, all of these things, you should be signed on to your Adobe account. If you don't have one, create one. I think you have to create one when you log into Fresco. So make sure that, you know, you use the same ID across and then it'll be much easier. You can always click on change and then it gives you all the different libraries that you have. And if you don't want to use any of those and you want to create your own, you can always click on this plus button here and create a new library. Okay. And once you have that selected, it gives you a few options here. That is, it tells you like, oh, there's a pattern that you can make with this one. There's a gradient or color theme over here. Do you want to save these as well? If you want to save this, you can just click and then it'll save that as well. I don't want it. So I'm going to uncheck that and you can actually use this to select everything. Let's click on save. And now it will show up here on your all assets form. Okay. Now let's go back to Fresco. I'm going to go outside. Click on create new and let's use the current screen size. You can actually use the same artboard as well. And let's go ahead and click on shapes now. That's my old one, by the way. Now go to your library. That is your print me some color. And your snowflake still hasn't come up. So usually these things take a little bit of time. Uh, sometimes they don't update immediately. You might have to wait for a while. So sometimes closing the app and reopening it helps as well. Let's just close the app and open again. Okay, so as shape is already here, I can see four. So let's go ahead and click on that shape and you will immediately see that this comes up here as a shape. So we can go ahead and fill this with some color that we want. So I have chosen some reddish and a dark reddish thingy. I'm going to use that and you can click on a lot of things here. You can click on fill, maybe back to fill and then it gives you a nice shape and you'll see that this is highlighted again. So just move this around wherever you want. You can turn it around, reduce the size. Don't use these handles here because then they will get distorted. Instead, use the corner ones to resize them. And maybe make some like that. I'm just going to turn this one off so that I can see what's happening. And then once you're done, you can click on any brush here and it just goes away. If you want to access the shape again, you can always click and hold or go to that particular library and you'll find your shape right there. Okay. And now let me do a bit more when it comes to this. This is how you create something or create a shape and save it by drawing. Let's go ahead and open up capture again because I'll show you how to create shapes 
using photographs okay let's go ahead and open capture you're in this screen so i'm just going to go ahead and click on camera icon here to go back to this screen and now i'll click on images and i have an image that i've downloaded i'll leave the link to download that for free click on images so this is the image i'm talking about and let's go ahead and bring this into capture and you see what happened how it looks like so now i can show you all these color icons and stuff like that so this is in the black and white option so click here and you can click on color and you see this is the color version of it but let's go ahead and click on the black and white version because that's more interesting right and you can obviously invert it and it smoothens it auto clean but let's leave it at that and you know obviously you get this option here where you can make a lot of different changes you can remove things and then like that and it's it's pretty awesome actually maybe i'm going to use this option here and click on like this and now you can go ahead and smoothen it if you want let's see what smoothing happens i think it's going to take some time i think i like the smoothen version and then click on save and we don't want anything else i'm just going to click on save okay so click on shapes okay so the shape is here i'm going to go ahead and click on that and you see it's too tiny because obviously we changed the size previously so i'm gonna try to increase it as big as i want but wait a minute before i do that i want to do something else so i'm going to go to my fill tool go back here click on new layer and let's make this completely red do we want red yes red and click on the fill tool and vector fill and then click on new layer and now let's go to our shapes and it comes up automatically let's go ahead and choose some color for this yellow and then click on fill and with vector let's fill it with vector okay and you see it creates this particular icon or image and then you can go to levels and you can try and work with different kinds of but before that always go ahead and go to your brush tool because then you can't see what's happening so okay and i'm going to go ahead and decrease the opacity of this so now you can see that it's a bit orangey and there are all these nice things happening so yes that's another way to use your shapes feature and by the way if you're using premium version i don't know if this works on the free version by the way if you click on this and if you go here wait a minute or if if you go back here there's this plus icon just click on that and discover new shapes so you have other things as well like comics you just have to click on follow there's also topography follow and then floral let's click on done and let's go see what these things are so if you go ahead if you click on comics you see all these bubbles you know all these bubbles and things that you can use to create nice effects not not for this obviously if you want you can use it but generally it doesn't work well for this that's it this brings us to the end of this tutorial and i hope you liked it it was just about exploring the shapes feature in adobe capture and adobe fresco and um, i hope you create lots and lots of wrapping paper you can also do fabric design with this as well and uh, i hope you have fun working out things with it by the way i'm actually planning a skillshare class where i'll be drawing some christmas related things in adobe fresco so if you're interested just keep an eye out i will be releasing it soon it's just that it's a lot of videos and needs a lot of time to edit okay if you want to support this channel you can buy me a coffee at coffee.com do share your work with me on instagram by tagging me as print me some color or think beyond color i would love to check out what you guys create using my tutorials if you like this video or if you like this tutorial do check out other fresco videos i have a playlist on my channel named fresco so go ahead and check it out do subscribe to this channel and don't forget to hit on that notification bell and i guess i'll see you in the next video then bye bye